Greetings, Lunarians and Brigandine fans. Welcome back to the Empire. I am your host, Vago Sonari. We are going to be getting into the quest guide for the Norzalio Kingdom today. If you have not seen my Brigandine Basics guide on questing yet, you can find that in the top right-hand corner with all of the other guide videos that I have produced. It will be located in Brigandine Basics Episode 3. However, I still will be going quickly over the basics, but then getting into some more advanced mechanics with the questing system. This guide is going to cover where to quest certain knights in order to get the most out of your Outlook ranks. If you don't know what Outlook ranks are, I will be discussing that here momentarily. I will also be discussing some of the criteria that is required to recruit certain knights on quests. And also I will be going over reward possibilities that is affected by which knight you choose to quest and where. Without any further ado, let's go. So just as a quick example, we're just gonna hit up our capital here. Let's go to Lanster and go to the quests menu. We've seen this before in the basic guide. However, if we scroll down the list here, looking at each individual character, You'll notice that the Outlook ranks will change on the right hand side depending on where you send these knights. For example, Grados has two Outlook ranks in both Aran Forest and Hills of Corral. So does Jiu. But if I go down here to Elena, for example, she has two Outlooks in Aran Forest, but only one Outlook rank in the Hills of Corral. Outlook ranks are determined by your character's level and their class. You will gain more Outlook ranks the higher level your character is and also what class tier your character is. So if I click on Grados right here and look at his affiliation with the Aran Forest, we notice that he has two Outlook ranks on Aran Forest. If you look on the left hand side below his possible rewards, you'll notice that he has a star next to his level and an X next to his class. This means his level has perfect affiliation with the Outlook ranks and his class has no affiliation with this particular location. Same thing with the Hills of Corral. He also has an X next to his class, which means he has no affiliation with this location. The thing that is causing his level to be a star is that he is at least level 20 or above. Let's look at a different character that is a little bit lower level. So we'll go and look at Elena here. We notice that if she goes to Arn Forest, he has two Outlook ranks with this one. However, as opposed to Grotos, her level does not show a star. It shows a down arrow. Because she is below level 10, this means she is less effective at questing, but it is still benefiting the Outlook rank because her class is also benefiting the Outlook rank of this particular location. If we change between Aran Forest and Hills of Corral, notice how her class symbol goes from a down arrow to an X. This means her class has no affiliation with the Hills of Corral, but has less affiliation with the Aran Forest. Less affiliation is of course better than no affiliation at all. This is precisely why she is getting two Outlook ranks for this location. This is due to her level and class both having a down arrow symbol. If one of those symbols was an X, either level or class, it would have an Outlook rank of just one. I'll definitely be showing some more examples where we have higher Outlook ranks like three and above, so definitely stay tuned for that if you are still confused. One more example I want to show here is Pick. Notice how Pick is at level 1. The Outlook rank for Arn Forest and Hills of Corral for Pick is both 1. Notice if we choose Arn Forest for Pick. His class has less affiliation with this location, but his level has no affiliation with any location whatsoever. Because if we go to Hills of Corral, we notice we have two X's on both level and class. If you are at least able to boost your knights to level 2 or above, they will have at least some effectiveness towards quest locations. From worst to best, the symbols basically go like this. X being the worst, down arrow above that, up arrow above that, and star on the very top. We will categorize this as X being no affiliation, down arrow being less affiliation, up arrow being good affiliation, and star being perfect affiliation. So we will continue to talk about affiliation as we move through this tutorial. So definitely, if you are confused, stay tuned. I'll be going over all of it again when we move to different locations on the map, which is what we're going to do right now. So we're going to head over to the move menu, and I'm going to move Grados and Jiu to the castle of Harmonia. Okay, so the turn has passed. Let's go ahead and head over to Harmonia where we now have Jiu and Grotos. Let's take Grotos for an example. Look at the Outlook ranks now on the locations on the right-hand side. Notice we have two Outlook ranks for both Alza Strait and Giron Alps, but in Plains of Delza, we have a full four Outlook ranks. If we click on Grotos and we look at Alza Strait, notice we have 
perfect affiliation for his level, but no affiliation with his class. Same thing goes for the Garon Alps, but if we head on down to the Plains of Delza, we have perfect affiliation in both his level and class. They both have star icons. This is ultimately what's going to affect your chances of getting rare items. It could be gear pieces, it could be consumable items, it could be rare monsters, who knows? Just know that the higher your outlook rank is, the more rare materials you are able to find. Let's look at one more example. Check out Giyu right here. Hers is very much the same. We click on her, she has two outlook ranks in both Alza Strait and Giron Alps. This of course is because we have perfect affiliation in her level but no affiliation in her class. Same thing as Grottos, she has perfect affiliation on the Plains of Delza in both her level and class. So now's a good time to talk about how to upgrade these symbols from X to down arrow, from down arrow to up arrow, and from up arrow to star. As I showcased before with Pick, he had an X on his level because he was level one. If you are level two to level nine, you will have a down arrow for questing. If you are level 10 to 19, you will have an up arrow for questing and of course if you are level 20 and up you will have a star for questing class works very much the same way assuming your class likes to go to certain locations it will either have a down arrow if you are a tier 1 class it will have an up arrow if you are a tier 2 class and of course if you are a tier 3 class you will have a star we'll pick one more example here to showcase what I mean if we pick Shizzler, notice how he likes to go to the Plains of Delza for his class, and also his level is an up arrow with the class. The reason, of course, why he has an up arrow on his level is because he is between level 10 and level 19. Also, as I explained before, since he has an up arrow on class, this is because he is a tier 2 class. If he were to change his class to a tier 1 class, assuming that class likes to go to certain locations, that class symbol would change from an up arrow to a down arrow simply because he changed from a tier 2 class to a tier 1 class. The result of that will cause you to lose an outlook rank. Luckily for you all I have taken it upon myself to map out where knights should be going and which classes like certain locations. You can find that text guide in the description below or you can also find it on the Brigandine discord server that I am hosting. I will also be showcasing that text guide on this video so if you also want to screenshot it you are more than welcome to do so. But I will showcase that as soon as we are done discussing the rest of the guide. So looking at our list of knights, notice how we have icons next to possible rewards. Let's look at Grottos really quick. Grottos' possible rewards to grab are monster collars, monster gloves, claws, helmets, swords, and monster armor. If you were confused before on what the M stands for next to gear piece icons, it simply means those gear pieces are for monsters. So no matter where Grottos ends up questing, he has a chance to pick up these type of rewards. However, if you're looking for something more specific, maybe you are looking for a class up icon. On the Plains of Delza, you notice that the reward section has a chalice on the far right hand side. There's also a bow symbol on the far left hand side. These rewards are not specific to Grottos, but if he does quest here, he has a chance of picking up these types of items as well. Also do remember you do have a chance to pick up free monsters as well depending on your outlook rank. You could quest with only a rank 2 outlook and get super duper lucky and get maybe a tier 3 monster, but of course you have much better chances of gaining power for monsters for free the higher your outlook rank is. So I'm actually going to go ahead and quest Grottos here and Geo here as well and see what rewards they can come up with. I could do more, of course, for this playthrough, but just for the demonstration, I'm going to keep it light. So we're just going to go with these two knights here. So let's go ahead and pass the turn. Going to the attack phase, passing that as well. There's Grottos. We have a good quest, which is one star. You have, again, one star for good, two star for great, and three star for excellent. We notice he was able to find a monster armor piece. This was specific to his possible rewards. We also have a good quest from Jiu as well getting a steel bow. This bow icon comes from the Plains of Delza as I showcased before. So now that we are in Season 3, a new feature has arrived. Notice how we have a glowing gold knight icon next to our locations. This simply means that you have a chance of recruiting additional knights for your country. The outlook rank does affect this probability, so make sure that you are taking full advantage of that. So what I'm going to do now is actually quest every single knight in my country to see if I can get 
another rune knight to join my country. Okay, we're good to go. Now, before I pass the phase, one very important thing that you want to remember before you pass on to the attack phase. Go ahead and hit your Y button on your controller. It will pop up an overall view of the menu of bases, knights, and monsters in your country. You can tab over these tabs by clicking the L and R shoulder buttons. What I'm mostly interested in before I commit my organization phase is looking at the Knights tab to make sure the status in the middle says quest for every single knight. This status could say quest, standby, or move. Just make sure that you check this status menu very frequently so you have confirmed on where you want your knights to go. Anyways, it's all been confirmed that they are questing. Let's go ahead and pass to the attack phase. And here is our results. Let's see. Good quest from Elena. She has a magic wand. Theodora, Swift Pearl, very good. Looking for a knight though. Fine jacket from Ferric. Ariana gets a tier two item here, the Holy Frost Axe, very good. Grados had good. Giu had an excellent quest. Look at this, a tier three sword. This sword is freaking amazing. I've got this a couple of times, but yes, this can happen if you have good outlook ranks. Sizzler also got a Blade of Durandal. Wow, that is insane. That is a crazy roll. Okay, anyways, besides my excitement there, Giu also was successful, as you can see by the gold knight icon, in recruiting a new knight for your country. So let's tab over to the next screen here. Brennan also had an excellent quest. Very nice. Tier 3 item there. Klaus, good. Jack, good as well. And some training. Very good. Okay. Wow, that was a very good roll in my opinion. Very nice. All right, so let's see who uh, we recruited for our country. So I'm not going to spoil the dialogue in this whatsoever. I'm just going to skip. And you guys can read that on your own time. But we have recruited Chu Fen. So when you recruit a new knight, they usually end up going to where the ruler of the country is stationed. Rubino being here at the capital, she went to where he is stationed. And that's the basic concept of recruiting new knights. Check your outlook rank and also check for the glowing gold knight icon in quest locations. So continuing our discussion about recruiting freelance knights, this knight in particular, Sheehan, requires specific criteria in order to recruit her for your country. If you notice the first sentence of the bio, it says, a dangerous woman who challenges any man she meets to a match. I won't spoil any of the dialogue for you, but when you do recruit her, she ends up challenging your knight to a duel. This knight has to be a male because her dialogue is very specific in regarding male rune knights and challenging them. It's very basic criteria and not hard to recruit her, but just know that she cannot be recruited by a female knight. Let's go to a knight that's a little bit more complex in his criteria. Notice the dialogue in his quest scenario. It says, why now you look like a fine knight, such beautiful armor, and for a woman to be traveling all alone, I take it you're a rune knight. I won't spoil the entire dialogue, don't worry, but going on to the next slide, he says, lady knight, be my goddess of luck, won't you? Stay here and pray for me. Third slide and final slide I have, he says, oh, my lady knight. You can probably already tell, but this quest does require a female knight. However, it does go a little deeper than that. The dialogue does continue to where your female knight ends up using healing magic in order to recover Alejandro. So far as I've seen, I've only been able to recruit this knight with Jiu, who is a healing class level 20 female knight, and Shu Fen, who we just recruited earlier, who is a cleric class and is also a female knight. I have yet to see any evidence of a male knight or a non-healing class knight recruit this rune knight. There is of course going to be a bunch more rune knights that you can't recruit without meeting certain criteria. I will be releasing separate videos on all of these knights to make sure you meet the right criteria in order to recruit them. The last thing we'll go over today is the quest document that I have drawn up for everybody to see, showcasing which classes belong in certain locations for questing. As we've shown earlier, Grados and Jiu being a Paladin class and a Saint class both like to go to the Plains of Delza. Chisler being a Knight likes to go to the same place, so does Klaus, etc. As we know, the Paladin class comes from the Fighter Type classes. This means that the Fighter Type Tier 1, the Knight class Tier 2, and the Paladin class or Dark Knight class, Tier 3, will all have good outlook rankings at the Plains of Delza. Same scenario for Jiu. The Saint type classes or the Cleric type classes like to go to the Plains of Delza as well. The Bishop class here comes from the Priest type classes, which like to also go to the Plains of Delza. So outlook ranking does not depend on certain class names. It depends on class type. 
whether that be fighter type classes, cleric type classes, etc. Outlook rankings depend on class types and not certain class names. While it is true that the tier 3 classes can yield a higher Outlook rank, if Shizzler right here for example made it to level 20 and a Paladin or Dark Knight class, he would also have a star ranking in his level and class. Okay, I think I've beaten this into your brain quite enough for today, but there is one more specific example I want to show you when it comes to quest location. I'm going to back out and go up here to Lancer. This is where Jack is stationed. Jack starts out as a level 8 fighter. I was able to get him to level 10 and classed him up to a swordsman. As we know, under the fighter type classes, you can either choose when you get to level 10 to either go to knight or to go to swordsman. I will say again here, if you choose swordsman, knight becomes completely unavailable to you. The same goes in reverse. If you choose knight, swordsman will become unavailable to you. However, the point of this is we know that knight classes were affiliated well with the Plains of Delza. However, swordsman classes are not affiliated well with the Plains of Delza. In fact, the only location that the swordsmen are well affiliated with in Norzalio Kingdom is the Arn Forest. Notice how Jack has an up arrow on both of his level and his class. The up arrows are coming for his level being at least level 10 or higher, and also his class being tier 2. If I were to quest him to the Plains of Delza, his class would have an X symbol. This is a prime example of depending on what class you pick for your knights changes the outlook ranking on certain locations when you quest. So as I said before, the final portion that we're going to look at in this guide is the class legend and the quest location guide. This comes directly from my Discord server where I type this up for everybody to look at. If you wish to have quick access to it, you can either screenshot it right here, go in the Discord, or look in the description below this video. Keep in mind this quest guide is only meant for Norzalio Kingdom since I only have access to the demo, but once the game officially releases, I will be releasing a quest location guide for each individual country. Anyways, looking at the class legend, we notice that there are two different types. There are female classes and male classes. You'll notice there are abbreviations for each class, LC being Lancer, TK being Temple Knight, etc. I have put these in order of class evolution. For example, the Lancer class is tier one. Lancer at level 10 goes to Temple Knight. Temple Knight at level 20 goes to Royal Guard. Going to male classes, Fighter is tier one. Knight is tier two. Paladin Dark Knight is tier three. You can of course check any class progression by simply going to the class menu in any castle and either clicking on a female knight or a male knight. You'll notice on the bottom half of the screen I have typed out every single location that is available for questing within the Norzalio Kingdom. Looking at Arn Forest, the first example here, we can tell that the thief type classes, hunter type classes, bard type classes, and swordsman type classes all like going to this particular location. You also have specific knights like Pick, who is a Barret rookie class, a unique class in the game, but that class also likes to go to this particular location. Going below to one more example, the Hills of Corral requires the Dancer type classes, the Monk type classes, and the Thief type classes to receive better outlook rankings. You'll notice below each location in parentheses, I have typed up the castle locations that you can find these particular locations for questing. Example, the Tylen Valley, you can find that location either in the castle of Angrain or the castle of Lawrence. Again, feel free to screenshot this, join the Discord so you can have access to it, or you can simply check the description below. Rude Knights, that is going to do it for today's guide on advanced questing. I really hope you enjoyed the presentation today. Once again, if you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments below. Also on the pinned comment that says any questions, ask me here. Don't forget to check the description for the quest location guide. You can also, again, screenshot the quest location guide on this video, or you can go to the Discord server so you can have access to it there. The link to the Discord server is in the description as well. I really hope you guys do consider joining up. There's a wonderful community in there growing every single day and also helping your boy out over here with his guide videos by giving me a whole bunch of information. I owe a lot of these guide videos to the community in the Discord server for real. So thank you guys very much. If you want to catch me live with any Brigandine streams, you can hit up my Twitch channel in the description as well. There's also the fan website that Veracity Trigger is hosting. It's the engine website for Brigandine. You can also check out more Brigandine resources below like the wiki page and the subreddit page. If you wish to request any certain guides that I have not planned out already, please hit me up in the comments below. I tally up all requests to make sure I have all the information for you guys that you need. 
Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe for more content like this, including guide videos and Let's Play series. And also consider sharing out these guide videos to new players who are interested in the game. You can find my full guide video playlist of Brigandine Legend of Renersia in the top right hand corner. I am your host, Valko Sonare. See you on the battlefield, Rune Knights. Peace. Bye.